Introducing, Introducing Uncharted Mariner. Now, you know, you'd be looking at this and you're like, is it a blue? Is it a teal? Is it a turquoise? Well, it Uncharted Mariner. To me, it, it is it's a seaworthy turquoise, really. That's it's this deep sea turquoise sea blue color. Uh, and you know, I think I always have to write like this little romance statement for Ranger about the color, but to me, Uncharted Mariner, a seaworthy turquoise embarking on a voyage to destinations unknown. I love the whole idea of Uncharted Mariner because it is that kind of wayward, wandering color. And when you see it, really, when you see the ink and the oxide, uh, I, I say all the time, you know, a shout out to the team at Ranger. We really try to represent the color in labels uh, and pins and everything. But it's when you see the actual medium on a surface that you can appreciate the true depth of the color. Now, as always with the new color, uh, it is shipping now. I know that Ranger was shipping all week, so some retailers, depending on how close they were to Ranger, they may have already received their order. Others, I, I saw some actually got some their shipments yesterday, but it is already shipping from Ranger worldwide. So uh, with the launch of a new color, it is available in all the mediums from the Distress Ink Pad and the Reinker, and we're talking traditional size, the Distress Oxide and Reinker, Distress Spray Stain, Oxide Spray, Distress Paint, embossing glaze and of course well my favorite the pin just because well i'm a pin collector and i love it i love it but when you see this color uh in action and you see it on the mix i think you'll truly understand uh, why this was important to add it to the line and i have said this before when it comes to the new colors you know the 12 new colors that we set out uh to launch gosh i want to say i think back in 2020 um you know i think many people as they're following along these new colors they're kind of anticipating a full you know, rainbow spectrum when we're done with those 12. And that was that was never my my plan. My plan is always just to look at the palette and really see where there are uh, colors that are very hard to replicate with the existing colors. Believe it or not, this is color number 69 uh, in distress. And that is if you're not counting picket fence or metallics. If you're counting picket fence, now we're up to 70. And of course, uh, with three metallics would be 73. So there's a lot of colors in the line. And so to find a, a very unique blend or a tone is incredibly cool. I love that. I didn't see that coming. That's good. I love all these. I love all of these. So let me just take these products off. We'll get rid of this cool prop. Love the, love the net. Speaking of props, I'm just saying, wait till you see the flat leg. It's, a, it's probably my favorite so far. Thanks, Mario. You're welcome. Thanks for taking that off. All right. Sure. So first we're going to talk about where this color fits in the line of, of distress and we'll go through the swatches so you can really see uh, the color and and how it works. So Uncharted Mariner, it, I would really describe it more of a turquoise than a teal, meaning it has more blue in it than green. But where I see it in the line, just move this off to the side so we don't get confused. This is, this is the dye ink, distress ink, and these are just swiped on watercolor paper. I swipe it because I want to give you like the, the full saturation of the color direct to paper and then wet it because of course the magic of distress the fact that it is water reactive is what's going to really uh, showcase all of these tonal values that you get with every color, right? So to me, it fits more in this realm, right? With tumble glass being the lightest in that kind of turquoise uh, arena in distress, then we have Broken China, Mermaid Lagoon, which to me is a much brighter turquoise, and then you see Uncharted Mariner. So it is that very deep kind of moody. Uh, I talked about moody colors. You'll notice if you look at a lot of the colors that we've added to, uh, the new colors of distress like villainous potion right or rustic wilderness or even prize ribbon they really have those deep tones that allow uh, this cool wicking that's not to say all the colors are uh, deep tones because we've had kitsch flamingo salvage patina but i love uncharted mariner just because you really can get that dark dark turquoise a lot of uh, kind of black in it but it wicks out to these beautiful tones i love the fact that uh, if you are doing any kind of it's a, to me it's a perfect summer color uh, but it works well, you'll see, with browns and everything else. But the, the tones that you get are something that you really can't replicate within the line. And I'll show you how it compares to other colors that some people, you know, because I know sometimes you look at packaging or sometimes even you're watching a video and you think, oh, it looks a lot like whatever. So I'll show some color comparisons as well. Now, when you get into oxide, uh, it is important to understand what makes an oxide, right? Because an oxide is a dye and a pigment. Distress ink is all dye. A dye and a pigment fusion, and if you wet it, it will oxidize, meaning you'll start to get some white or a white value that starts to raise to the surface. So if you compare just these colors, well, I mean all the colors specifically, right? 
you're always going to get a much lighter value in oxide um, when you spray it, right? You don't have to spray it. You can stamp with oxide, you can blend with oxide, but if you wet it, that's where you can start bringing up some really interesting values. And Uncharted Mariner really surprised me because um, it, it really kind of illuminated. I, we've seen that only with a few colors of oxide that they change to a very unique value when you wet it. You know, these, I would say, uh, are pretty similar, but this one you can see is such a drastic change. And, and when I was speaking to the chemist, Steve's like, that's just because when you have a, a color that is just so dark, as soon as you hit that oxide, when you have that pigment, it just, yeah, it illuminates from the inside out. But I still love its dark tones, especially when you compare it to, obviously, all the other uh, oxides in the line, but very unique. So if you're looking for that darker, deeper turquoise, uh, I saw a comment say it's more like a navy. It is not really a navy blue. It may be showing that way on camera, but it is not. It is a deep, deep uh, turquoise, it really is, all right? so. Those are just the swatch colors, wet, ink, oxide. Now let's just show you kind of comparisons of colors in the line. So maybe that will give you just a better visual. This is what it would compare to say greens. And I'll even bring the oxide back in because I do have some swatches here. I don't know how many are gonna fit on the screen, but you'll be able to see like in here, this is kind of the green realm, the savage patina, peacock feathers. This is the oxide, this is the ink. So you can see that it really, it definitely reads more blue than green when you're comparing it to some of the teals that are in there, right? Uh, just very, very different. You think, okay, well, then it is more blue, right? It's gonna be more, you know, faded jeans or maybe even deep like chip sapphire. Well, no, not really either, because when you get that and you're like, okay, now I see this is faded jeans and chip sapphire, which is, you know, to me like a, a mid-tone blue uh, and a deep, deep blue that has just a lot of black and red in it, the chip sapphire. But you can see here that when you compare it to a blue, okay, now I'm really starting to understand those, those turquoise vibes. And I do these just to kind of help with the visual. Obviously, nothing's going to be better than seeing it in person, you know. Uh, if, you, if you have it or you head into a shop that has it, when you see it in person, uh, that I think is the ultimate. But I, I try to create these comparisons. So if you are watching this live or on replay and you want to see the color, well, that to me is the the best representation of it when you see it compared to blue or things that are, are more teal, if you will, in the line. So Uncharted Mariner, well, the tones of this, that, that to me is what I really love about developing these new colors, is, is what sort of tonal values can we achieve with this color? And this color just does not disappoint. So this is Distress Ink, Uncharted Mariner on watercolor paper, Distress watercolor paper, and this is just layered, meaning uh, ink is applied to a craft mat sprayed with water, dip, dry, dip, dry, dip, dry. And by dipping and drying, you're able to start building up all of these layers. Because, of course, it's water reactive, uh, you can add water and the color is simply going to intensify. But I like the fact that with this particular color, we do get some really great values of this turquoise color. That it doesn't shift to a pink or break down into anything weird. It's just a beautiful color. Now, if you're blending, right? Blending also incredibly beautiful, right? It's gonna blend in that really dark, deep turquoise, but of course it does allow you to fade this out. Now, with anything, especially if you're working with Distress and you've watched uh, any of these releases and videos, it is all about paper, right? Papers are going to change any of your colorants, especially if you're either blending or layering. So this was Distress watercolor cardstock, this is Distress Mixed Media Heavy Stock, which has a little bit, you can see just the color difference. This has more of that cream value. It's not as yellow as a number eight tag, right? When you think of shipping tags. Mixed Media just has a, like a light, kind of a, a creamy yellow, but look at how it changes the color, right? So if you compare the inked background, now you do start to see a little bit more of a, a green value because, well, blue and yellow make green. So although it doesn't turn into a teal, you are getting more of those green undertones, especially in here, than you would if you're working on white. So changing your surface is also going to change. And, if, and again, this is just the ink, right? If you are a true distress lover uh, and you have the other 68 colors, well, you can, you can mix this with anything, right? You can take this, mix it with salvage patina and get a, a more of a turquoise vibe, or you can you know, mix it with cracked pistachio or peeled paint just to throw in some more green. But just to show you direct on paper how it works. Blending, no different, right? So here you can see that when, when we blend on that mixed media, again, we're getting more of that, that yellow that's warming up this turquoise. So it does read uh, a little bit 
a little bit greener, and I like that. Again, still not, still not teal. Let's see if I can find that. You know, you're still not going into these values at all. Still very strong in blue because it is an intense, deep, deep uh, turquoise. Now, with oxide, as I mentioned, I love how this color changes. Let me just grab both of these watercolor, right? So these are both on watercolor cardstock, ink versus oxide. But you see what I mean? You're still getting the depth because it is a dye and a pigment. So you're getting the depth of that turquoise. But how it oxidizes, man, you just get this surprise, I don't know, very oceanic vibe. When I saw this color, it just it totally reminded me of water in, in all different stages, right? The deep blue ocean, you know, Caribbean sea, like there's a lot of values in this particular turquoise that we can play around with. When you blend, because again, it is a fusion of dye and pigment and oxide is always going to give you a nice, smoother, more opaque blend, if you will, because it has that pigment in there. So that is why you're seeing more of that, that darker uh, black value of the Uncharted Mariner. And here you're seeing it a little bit, a little bit more vibrant because it does have that pigment that's helping that dye sit on top of the surface versus soak in. Of course, when you layer it, you'll get a little bit of a change. We see when you change the paper, you can see you get a little bit of a change when you're blending. Uh, only when you start going light because that's where the dye is allowing that paper color to show through. But it still is worth uh, kind of giving, giving a little a little mix of your papers and seeing which color values you like more. Now, if you haven't gone into sprays, just need to tell you, sprays are, sprays are important, okay? Especially if you like to do backgrounds, if you like to do any type of mixed media, even if you're stamping with them, because the spray is going to deliver a huge saturation of color, okay? So this is the spray stain, just spritzed onto watercolor and mixed media. So you can see one is just more of that Blue one has just a little bit more yellow in it. And then just flicked with a little bit of water and let dry, right? So wherever the water landed, it just it starts to wick the color. But look at the intense saturation of a spray. So sprays also allow you to do a lot of things, meaning if you wanted to, say, cover a background, you could wet the paper first before you do the spray, and that's going to give you uh, much more of this lighter value. But if you ever spray dry paper, you get just an intense saturation of color. And that's what I was saying about Uncharted Mariner. It's a, a beautiful, deep turquoise, but look at the difference from just spraying it directly on, all right, really, really deep, to layering it with water. You get all of this kind of in between. And that, that to me is the magic of a new color, right? It's seeing what it can do beyond just the, the original color. That, I think, is what intrigues me. These are the oxide sprays. Now, again, a completely different vibe. Definitely not as blue as, as even Salty Ocean, because I thought that too. Not as turquoise as Mermaid Lagoon. I, I showed you that comparison. It still has those rich uh, turquoise values, but the oxide, not nearly as dark as, as the stain. So mixing these together is also really cool. Remember, you can always mix your oxides and inks, either uh, backgrounds, either stamping, or, or even when you're spraying. Now we'll talk distress paint because I know there's a lot of people out there uh, that, that join the love for distress paint. Just an amazing medium because it is a very fluid acrylic paint, so it is not a thick body paint. It, I mean, you almost want to think of it as an ink. It's really that, that thin. And different colors have different viscosities, and the viscosities do thicken over time. Uh, and some remain very, very thin. But what I love about distress paint, of course, is that I can brush it on. I can see my brush strokes because it's thin. You can, of course, add layers if you want. Uh, but it is a water reactive paint that is waterproof when it's dry. So if you brush this on, you're gonna get just those, those great values. But of course, if you layer it, you also get that playfulness like you would get with an ink, meaning you're gonna get the, those ripples, that little water reaction. And this is just taking drips of paint on a craft mat, spraying it with water, same way you would do with an ink, but it's paint. So you're gonna dip, dry, dip, dry. You can even spray it more to get this to move. But once this is dry, so now that this is dry, this is completely waterproof. So if I spray water over it, if I do inks, if I do crayons, if I do anything, this color will not move. This value will not change. And that to me is uh, what is really unique about working with paint. So especially if you like to do layers and you say, oh, you know, I, I want to put this background, but I want to, you know, add some pink on top or some green, but I don't want this to re-wet and mix in with the color even if you're gonna use white, like you're gonna use picket fence, then paint is a great foundation. But a lot of people, when they see that, that bottle of paint, they just think about dripping it on, taking a paintbrush and painting it, which you can. 
But the magic of distress paint and why I wanted to add this in the line, because let's face it, Ranger does a lot of uh, paints out there, but that's for more of, of a painting technique. Distress paint was always designed to be more of a background technique. It also works on metal, it's permanent on fabric, it's permanent on uh, wood, so it's just a, a great foundation. Now if you're switching substrates, you'll see you don't get much change at all. If you, if you didn't look at the paper, the colors would look, well, almost identical, because it is just pigment, right? So now that we're dealing with the pigment, it's fully opaque. So when you're doing all of your, your brushing, you're, it doesn't really matter whether you're painting white cardstock, yellow cardstock, chipboard, paint is a paint, it's going to be opaque. But when you wet it, right, when you're doing your backgrounds, because you're getting some thinner values, you'll get a little bit of a subtle change in here, right? But when it starts getting thick, it'll stay as dark as it does there because it's all pigment, right? Cool. Now we get into the embossing glaze, which I love. If you're not familiar, again, with embossing glaze, because Distress products have different properties, and I think now, you know, because there are so many art mediums out in our industry, which is wonderful, sometimes we just see a product and we just assume it's like everything else. And I think that's, there's still people that, that have yet to, to truly understand what embossing glaze is. Distress embossing glaze, it is an embossing powder, right? You have to put embossing ink down or some type of ink, sprinkle the powder, shake off the excess, and heat it with a heat tool to melt it. But this is completely translucent. So all of the Distress Embossing Glaze colors are translucent. They're, they're see-through. So that really allows some great opportunity for layering. Sure, you can put it over something, meaning if there was writing, you could see through it. Uh, if you had another color under there instead of clear, so let's say you, you used uh, cracked pistachio and you put this over the top, that green value would impact the color of your glaze. So this is just showing you, uh, much like ink, right, how an embossing glaze will change its value depending on the color of, of surface that you emboss on. So whether that is a painted surface, an ink surface, a collage surface, that's what makes embossing glaze so unique. And I love these values of Uncharted Mariner, uh, especially because just that really deep, I just keep calling it moody, but I love uh, the look of that. So if you haven't played around with this, I do recommend you, know, you can you can use it on, on texture paste, through a stencil, you can use it with stamping, you can even use it with water. I've done many videos where you can actually just flick water on a background, pour your embossing glaze on it, shake it off, and it will stick to those drops of water, allowing you to heat emboss it, and you just get some great little splatters of glaze, but it is translucent. So whatever you have in your background, your color, your image, whatever, is going to show through. So those are really kind of the, the run through of the swatches of Uncharted Mariner. And I'm reading all the, the comments. Thanks, you guys. I You know, I always know that there's anticipation where people are like, oh, I hope it's this, and I hope it's yellow. that, and we need this. <laughs> yellow. Well, yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's yellow. definitely not gonna be a yellow. Um, I explained that last video, last release of, of Saltwater, but this is my reasoning. I was looking the palette, and I'm like, what is that unique color that I can't really blend to? Right, and I explained that even with yellows when we did saltwater taffy, that you have it's much easier to blend a yellow to get more of a butter or a this or a that. But colors that are truly unique, again, like saltwater uh, taffy or like salvage patina, or in this case, uncharted mariner, they just add something really exciting to uh, the world of distress. Right. So now let's take a look at the makes. Let's see these colors in action. You know, how do you how do you work with those? How are they, they going to look on things? And I think what's also going to be super amazing when you see them is how they play with so many different things that you might already have. So a shout out to Paula, a shout out to Zoe, a shout out to Stacy, a shout out to Sharon. They are the four new color makers that have, that have been on this adventure. They always work under ridiculously tight deadlines uh, to, to do these new colors. And, you know, because they haven't seen anything any, before, they... They're surprised when they get the color. So, you know, when they have agreed to this at the beginning, I'm like, you're agreeing to the whole deal, right? You don't yes. get to pick and choose which color. And, <laughs> and, and not only that, but I'm not going to tell you what the color is until the box arrives at your house. So, you know, this way you can just take it and do what you want to do with it. So I do love seeing uh, how each maker and each maker you'll see brings a completely different style to uh, what that color is all about. So Paula created this on an etc. tag. I love the vintage vibe. Paula's contribution to new color is always uh, showing a vintage aspect, a lot of ideology and how that plays in. But you can see here, uh, Sizzix dye, right? Just done with a little gold metallic, how beautiful that is. Look at that distressed crackle paste in the background, 
right, and how she just tinted that. And there's a lot of different products she used, everything from paints. Here you can see the glaze. So look at that embossing glaze through that die cut, right? So see just the, the addition that it gives, not only the texture, but the color and just that deep, deep value of color. When you're using a glaze, because it is translucent, you don't have to cover the whole thing, leave some of that space uh, open, but really allowing you to go in and, and create these beautiful backgrounds all of that paper in the back, of course, paper dolls, just a, a very, very charming make on an et cetera tag using Uncharted Mariner. So you can see the depth of that turquoise color and especially the fact that you can control how it fades out, how it wicks out, how intense do you want it, but yet it all plays together. It's, it's really amazing, I think, when you see these makes, like what you can do with just a, a single color, right? So here's a card that Sharon created. This background is done with oxide. Right? So you can do oxide spray or you can go uh, direct to, to paper with the pad, but the sprays are going to give you uh, more of a saturation. And just using a white embossing, you can put that either on the top or use white emboss as a resist. Uh, white emboss makes, is really nice if you just put it on the top of a background, but there again, uh, paired with a Sizzix die. It's always amazing because the, the makers are like, I'm going to use a Sizzix die. You're gonna, yeah, I just think it's very cool to see these dies uh, utilized on, on the makes. But just a great card, so simple, but you will also appreciate the value of that color because it is that deep uh, turquoise color. Just so beautiful. And of course, Zoe is just going to, she's going to represent not only just the grunge, but she's going to celebrate the theme of the color, right? So another etc. tag. See how different like a color can be to a maker when you put it in the maker's hands. I love this Uncharted Mariner tag just using that. You just There we go. You can see the glaze done on those letters that really make it pop. I love the fish. There's that bubble stamp. Oh, see the bubbles? How bubbles. great that is? Bubbles. And then just this great kind of grungy, rusty porthole window with the hardware heads that she created. Uh, that stamped image. Look at this. Right? This is, I think, from Steampunk Parts or Industrious. One of those dies, but just done out of the metal, the metal strips. There's, again, some etc. trims. But just look how great this color works. There's a you know, crack leather cardstock, or you can use the, the 3D folder. Again, another 3D folder with the metal using some of the images, right, the eccentric. But I love the fact of taking a color and again, just seeing the different personalities of a color, right? And how each maker is going to use that color in their own way. Because sometimes you're looking, you're like, but I, I like grunge, why do I want the blue? Because it's, it's a great color when you're putting it with with brown. It's a great color if you like clean. It's a great color if you do vintage. So Stacy created this card. Uh, Stacy, she stays very shabby. I love the, the shabby make, meaning uh, more creams, more texture, a little uh, on the softer side, but still very much uh, using uh, inks, papers, watercolors. So here you can see just using it as a watercolor, right? Whether using the ink pad, reinker, or in this case, sprays. Stamping some backgrounds, the intensity of stamping. Remember, stamping with stains, that's another thing. If you haven't stamped with spray stains, they're wonderful because they give you that instant watercolor where you can spray it down on a craft mat, literally ink your stamp with the spray. It will be very wet and fluid. Stamp it and let it dry, but you get just some great watercolor values in there. Again, you see a little noteworthy stamping there. There's the embossing glaze, I'm trying to get you to see a little shine to it, right? I just love the, the look of this. And so when you see these makes together, here, let me just kind of slide these over just so you can see them all like in a frame. Just so unique already, just on the first round, how different a, a color can be. I mean, I, I think it'd just be a fun series to just start with, just go by the, the color palette of Distress and start with each color, even the older colors, and kind of show you this visual of how you can take a color and really change it up to, uh, to your style, right? But there's plenty of makes, so I'm just going to keep going. There's a million million makes that they did. I'm always impressed with the, the quantity of, of makes that, that I get from them. Just so cool. So Sharon created this card. This is all done with spray stains. Again, if you're looking for saturation, sprays are going to be good. Whether you do spray stains, oxide sprays, you can mix and match. But this is just done on a die cut. A great way that you can create background paper and die cut, right? And then layer your pieces. Saves a lot of hassle from, you know, either ink blending or instead of buying a bazillion colors of cardstock, which I know we have anyway, but it's nice that, especially if you have dyes that give you the ability to layer, use your inks, right? I love this background of this ideology stencil card, right? It already comes die cut and it's craft, but what a great foundation for a card just to kind of 
a dry brush over it with, with paint or gesso, and then just adding a little ideology label sticker, but beautiful card, really makes that color pop. And see, by mixing it with different colors, and she did, she used some different colors in there, right? Working with Salvage Patina, Crushed Olive, Mowed Lawn, you can still mix those colors, and that's where you see how just Uncharted just fits right in, right? It's always interesting, I think, you know, when we see a new color, at least it is for me, that when there's a color that exists, and I mentioned this at the beginning of the live, you just think like, well, how, how is it not part of the line? Like, what did I use to create this look before this color? And then the truth is, oh, I didn't. I never had this, this color. You know, I may have had Mermaid Lagoon or, or Broken China or something, but I didn't have this, this intense color. So it's always nice. Zoe created this card. I love that. I love seeing this giant moth from Specimen. I love the inlay of the die cuts there. Again, a little crackle paste through the new stencils. Isn't that great? And I love how just the color pulls up around that crackle. But see, again, with any color, it doesn't have to be the whole deal. It can be, right? You can definitely do the entire deal of color. But if your style, in this case, you know, Zoe is always like, use the new color with brown. Brown needs to be, you know, the focal point and the color is the accent because it's always great to see the vintage side of a color, especially you can see the clean side and the vintage side. It's also really cool to see that if you are a tag maker, I love to make tags and people always say all the time, what do you do with a tag? But a tag is a tag and it can be a tag, but it could easily just go on the front of a card, right? There's nothing wrong with, with taking that tag, designing it, building off of it, and then layering it onto a card. But see all that detail, it's really fun just to even add a little bit of water coloring on there. Just cool. That to me is, is seeing how those, those colors play differently. You can see a lot, again, a lot of different, a lot of different styles. So Sharon created this card. You'll see a lot of cards. Sharon, I think, just went card crazy. Maybe there was like 13 cards that, uh, that so she created. So many cards. So many. Yeah. But, but it's very cool to see different styles. You know, I, I like just seeing what she's going to, to dream up. Here you can see the background is done in paint. And this is what I was saying about distressed paint, that you have the ability to still wet it out and create backgrounds blended with different colors, right? You can do some lifting, but once it's dry, it is done. You go over with a little bit of grit paste, some embossing glaze to add some texture. And then we have all these die cut butterflies. They're just done in white, but you can see that reflection. And if you see that reflection, hopefully you know exactly what that is. No, it's not embossing powder. This is done with foundry wax, right? So Distress Foundry Wax, just apply that, heat it, and you just get that wonderful leafing over the top, as well as those splatters. Do you see these kind of gold splatters throughout that card? And I turn it, using some Foundry Wax. Absolutely beautiful to see uh, colors working together. And again, she always goes in the back, fossilized amber, right? Even some carved pumpkin, which, you know, there, again, there's people that underestimate a lot of different colors in the line, and there's reasons for that. Like carved pumpkin, for example, is a very clean orange. Now, would I paint something orange other than a pumpkin? Probably not, but throwing it into a background, especially if you mix in some fossilized amber, it is going to give you a much brighter rust color than rusty hinge. So think of colors that way, that every color, believe it or not, in my world really matters uh, to distress. It's just about how you use it and what you pair it with, because it can really change uh, a color that you initially start with. These little vintage cards, Stacy created this, this great little series, right, of all these stamped cards. Take a look at these. These all just, they're little open cards, great little note cards, all embellished with so much detail, but this is the little tiny toadstools. I love that stamp set, but just look at the detail, right? That whole shabbiness, a little bit of, of stamping, some tags, some buttons, some burlap, some denim, hand stitching on that, and creating these little cards. Again, compartmental making. Right? Maybe you want to do a bunch of backgrounds and play around with different colors of inks or oxide, uh, mixing it with different colors to really see how Uncharted Mariner fits in with those colors. And you can see whether it's fossilized amber or uh, frayed burlap or pumice stone, you just start to, with any color, it will change the existing colors you have. It's going to just give you some surprise values that you've never achieved before with other colors in distress. That's what's always nice about adding these. But just going in and doing watercolor, just great to, to see, again, that the shabby style of, of something when it comes to making. Now these cards, one is Sharon, one is Zoe. I'll tell you which one, but you probably don't need to know which one is which, but this is Sharon. This one Zoe created. 
I love these surprises when I get the makes because I don't know what's coming until I set it for live. But I always love the fact that when a maker uses very similar products, whether that's in this case an embossing folder, right, a 3D folder, or stamps, just how they look at a product different. That's what lives are all about. That's what any type of visual presentation really is about for you guys, is to remind you to do you, but be open to what a certain product, whether that's a stamp or a die or, or even a color, can do, right? You don't have to do what everyone else is doing. You do it your way. But creating an inky background with all different colors, right? Layering some, some paper dolls, some layers, some stickers, beautiful card. Love how Uncharted comes in there and just gives it that depth, but how it also wicks out into these other colors, right? Great for patina, obviously great when you pair it with salvage patina and cracked pistachio. It's just like, it, it's a must have when, when the, those deep colors come in. But then also more of an industrial look to this that Zoe did on metal, right? Working with paint, it's gonna give you that really deep, deep value, but also using the inks, right, to add some accent. Still go in, do your grit, do your grunge, do your gears, the hat, but very cool. A, a totally different look for the new color, but on a same, a same substrate. Absolutely cool. And that's what I love about this color, right? Uncharted, that depth right there. So you can see, not really a navy, I would say deep, deep turquoise. I agree. Both awesome. Just amazing. Every time we see these makes, especially for a new color, it's, it's pretty miraculous to celebrate just a color and what it can do. Normally when we're doing lives on product, we're talking about stamps or dyes or stencils, or, but I just like, ah, what a color can do, what a color can do. All right. So Paula created this ideology divided drawer. I love this vignette divided drawer, but I also love just really how she uses a new color when uh, she pairs it with ideology, right? So in this case, uh, going in and and kind of dry brushing, staining the outside of that wood box, but also adding some stamped imagery, right? And all details, she does the back, right? Usually my back is completely unfinished, but I love just how she, she carried on with stamps and embossing, right? Using some of the new eccentric as well, just adding all those little details. That's a fun stamp set, that new set, because so you can just add in all sorts of little, little elements in there, right? But then look at all the details inside each little window. I'll hold it close just to try, there we go. I'll try to get the light to cooperate. There we are. I love the collector, the optical lens, a little thimble. Look at the toadstools that she painted with Uncharted, adding those little spots on it, right? There's a little in the back. I love that gold curio frame. Those are all fun, like vintage daguerreotype. Little paper dolls, little matchbox in there. The flowers, right, also be colored, the, the bouquet. And then we've got uh, the trim tapes here. And then again in the back, there is one of those stencil chips. I love those. All right. Metallic. They look like metal, but that's actually paper. But they're incredibly cool. The little books, right, done from ephemera. Look at that little library. A little stick in there. And again, uh, another of those painted toadstools under the domes and using all the little curator snippets. It's not great, but see, again, using that color as an accent into vintage. So does it have to be overpowering? No, but is it a great addition? Sure, because I can't think of a distress color that would give me these accent colors, right? It could be something else, but it wouldn't be uh, this color. And that's what I love uh, about adding color. It's always really good, always really good. All right, so now we're gonna start mixing it up. We're gonna go in and just show like, well, what happens if you, if you start mixing this? Because I, I did mention mixing a, a bit, and how does this really fit in? So Stacy created this small etc. tag. You can see how Uncharted is mixed in with several other colors in there. Most of these makers do some type of tutorial, uh, and I, I say this every time I do a live. If you are inspired by the makes that you see in live, my advice is to follow the makers. Go to timholtz.com, there's a makers page, click makers, there's an entire list. It shows their Instagram, it shows their blog, or if they have a YouTube channel, it will link that instead. And follow them, turn on notifications. Many makers, yeah, there's people that, that are still blogging, but a lot of makers I've noticed are sharing tutorials in Instagram, in their feed or in their story. And that's where it's at, that's where they're sharing the tips or the colors. So if you ever was like, oh, I, I wanna know what they use for this. If you're not following them on, on all their channels, especially things like Instagram now, you're going to really miss out on that because, well, blogging takes a lot of time and I know a lot of them like to share the how-tos uh, on social. 
So in this case, look at that, that detailed background of the floral outline uh, stamp. Again, a little bit of ideology collage. But I love how this just blends, how that goes from uncharted but mixed in with so many different colors to start getting this kind of uh, maroon burgundy color. Love that. Love the shabbiness too. Again, just all the details. The die cut, a little watercolored element. So good. And then I have this pile of cards. And I, I say this, I think, probably every new color as well. That Sharon's ability to change style from one make to the other, that's like a superpower. I don't have that superpower. I mean, I, I think that, that my look and feel has been pretty consistent through the years. But with Sharon, I think that's such a superpower to be able to do, you know, this kind of look, a little bit grungy, a little bit vibrant, even down to mixed media. So where do you see all these ideas she had for uh, Uncharted, right? So this is just a blend with Oxide. Love seeing that blended card. Choose to shine again, another uh, Sizzix die. And then just using the stars with metallic, a little splatter. But what a beautiful blend in Oxide. Because when you start putting it with, you know, things like picked raspberry, saltwater taffy. Not sure if those are the colors. I'm just making a guess here. But you really start to create more uh, violet. Let's see. Is that right? Is that right? Oh, see, this preserves. Ah, oh, you got me there. Yeah, that could have been picked raspberry. But no, I see it's more purple now. But how it blends in, see, you're starting to get those new colors. That's what I was mentioning. You're getting these new color mixes you wouldn't have had before uh, because we have Uncharted in there. Love this as well. Love all the layers of color, right? Great way that you can just take a bunch of inky papers, do a die cut, right? Like this, the modern floristry, just so great to cut out these big whimsical blooms, if you will, and stack them together. Right? Sometimes when we see die cuts, we think, oh, it needs to have a specific place or an embellishment. How about you just take all those scraps of backgrounds that maybe you like, maybe you don't like, but cut them out and build them together. I think adding those bits of black really make it pop. And then you see on the back that 3D folder, see? Looks like it's stitched, but it isn't. Right? I love that. That's that quilted 3D folder that just has a little bit of texture to it. But what a great background for a card. Again, another way to, to say, hey, here's where that new color can balance those other colors, right? Whether it's cracked pistachio or shaded lilac or any of those, it's just nice. But man, stylistically, so different. And then these little ATC cards that she created, just great little fodder. I know a lot of people are doing fodder school, which is amazing just to see uh, the versatility and variety of people using their products, their paints, their inks, their stamps, their stencils. But look at how... Uncharted plays in with these other colors to create these little cards. And if you're not into ATCs, again, I always say, don't, don't be so caught up with what a, a specific craft is called or a specific trend is called. These are beautiful card fronts. So if you're like, I don't really do ATCs, you should still take an ATC class or I don't do, I don't do junk journaling. You should still take a junk journal class because you never know what you're going to learn that you can adapt to what you do, right? For example, these incredible card fronts, right? You had a, just a, a card that just makes a perfect card front each time. So you can still take that class, learn how quick and easy it is to, to work on a sheet of paper, cut it up and create these cards. And then boom, you have card fronts. Or if you're into ATCs, it's a, a great way that you can uh, share art with, with friends. People are asking, what is an ATC? An artist trading card. In other words, it's pretty much the size of a playing card, standard playing card, but you make art. And the idea behind artist trading cards was that you made a batch of cards and you traded it with someone else that made cards. So you would trade card for cards. I guess maybe old school baseball card uh, trading, but you were trading art. And that's and there's still a lot of groups out there that do ATCs where they, they make trading cards to get together. They mail them to each other. And it's a great way to, to give someone a piece of your art, but they're very small and easy, easy to create and do. Um, and I just think it's great. So these love this series, Sharon. And when I, I saw the first one, I'm like, oh, I love that. And then when I saw all three of these, I'm like, man, okay. So these are done with embossing glaze, right? Distress embossing glaze, all the different colors. We launched some brighter colors earlier this year, but you're gonna see that each, each of these cards, completely different color selection, but each one has that Uncharted Mariner in there. This is stamped with the brush stroke stamp, right? Talked about this during Saltwater Taffy release. It is a great stamp set from Stampers Anonymous. Uh, because it looks like paintbrush, but you stamp it and it just gives you that great vibe. But how wonderful is that with embossing glaze? Because you're still creating that brush stroke, right? 
And I love her stamp choices. These are a lot of old sets that go back and then she added the new Noteworthy. But look at the different color palettes she used. So here we've got just that, that wonderful kind of funky tropical. This is definitely more uh, neutral, earthy, but you'll see how Uncharted just fits right in. Fits great with the brights because it's so dark and deep. Fits great in, in neutrals and fits great with all the blues and teals. Right? Be you, the world will adjust. All done with Noteworthy and then just that single stamped image. But this is the fun of, again, a new color. Playing around with the other things that you have and see how it works together, right? How is that gonna work with my bright stuff? How is that gonna play in with neutrals? Cause you know me, that like this right here, this middle card, that, that's my jam right there. But I also love that if you're doing uh, beachy or summertime, how that deep color really does make these other colors brighter. Contrast is key to make certain colors pop, right? And then we have this card. I just, to me, it, it has such a, a great vibe, right? If you, if you follow Lisa Condon, she's just an absolutely amazing, amazing artist. One just, this totally reminds me of her uh, style. Very abstract, very great shapes, but bold. I love the palette. But if you look at this, this is taking... Uh, abstract faces that die with Sizzix. And again, you may have just seen it used as faces, but taking these panels and using those pieces to create such a fun and whimsical, colorful collage. It also has a little bit of a, a Mary Blair a throwback, you know, from Disney and Small World, depending on your palette. But I love the idea of taking shapes and color because this could just be you painting papers, inking papers for no reason. That's what I said. Don't always start a... Uh, creating with an end make in mind because sometimes it really restricts just your your play time instead sit down and say today I'm gonna do backgrounds today I'm gonna uh, do blending today I'm gonna do die cut and then before you know it, you have all these great components that can come together and create magic but I absolutely love the look of, of that card so wow just so different and then of course the vintage side but how Uncharted really works with other colors. I think when I saw these makes, I'm like, all right, I'm going to, I know, you know, theme wise, they don't go together, but it does give you a, a total visual representation of how you can use Uncharted Mariner with other colors in the distress line, depending on your style, right? So, so good. So good. All right. We've got just a few more makes just to kind of go back to using it in, it, in its true form, uh, but just nonetheless, inspiring right beautiful beautiful they are beautiful 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 uh so stacy created this etc tag i love the shabby look of this well i just love the whole idea of this make right using a little vintage coin purse that's on there look at that found objects for the win love this mini paper doll happy that we have those again little adornment right here but there is a touch of Uncharted Mariner just in like a little bit of everything. Even down here, you see, you know, the use of, of paint or using the use of inks. But I love how it pairs with kind of that, that coppery effect, that coppery color, or even some of those warm tones, right? Those neutrals, whether you're working with antique linen or scattered straw, uh, just to create that vibe. But to me, when you're pairing it with, with earth tones, Uncharted Mariner has this really deep, deep, color very rich and doesn't appear tropical or summery at all so if you're thinking of fall makes or or you like a lot of uh, more organic makes this is where this color still fits in beautifully in the line and why why we needed to add it right a happy place to be indeed but yeah don't you just love all the little details right the little stitch scraps of lace all the threads little snippets of of embossing glazed die cuts a little splattering of you know foundry wax or grit paste and you know, of course, found objects just have my heart. I'm sure Paula probably wants that little coin purse because she loves those too, right? But great, great idea for for make in creating that. Then when I saw this card, it was like fabulous. And I know you guys are going to love this as well because, well, not only are we fans of the professor, we're fans of Zoe. Take a look at this card that Zoe did using Uncharted Mariner, totally theming it out, right? But I love the, the background. So the background is metal. I don't know if you're able to see that color, that Uncharted Mariner really rubbed into that metal of that 3D folder, right? That beautiful, beautiful damask folder in the back. We've got the professor. And take a look at this, right? Take a look at the octopus around there as that collar. Isn't that so cool? 
that's from the Sea Creature stamp set, and I mean that is that's fussy cutting. <laughs> That's Fussy Cutting 2.0 right there. I mean, just unbelievable, but it's so clever to do the collar and then pairing it with that noteworthy, be you, the world will adjust. Absolutely. So I know for people that are fans of, of the professor, just look at that. That is a, a very cool and imaginative way to, to use that. And then of course, the rest is just watercolored with inks, right? So changing up your mediums of any color. I know we're, we're here to celebrate the new color, but changing your mediums of any color you have that is key to distress, right? Because paint is going to give you one value in your background. Inks are gonna give you a completely different background. And if you watercolor with re-inkers instead of the ink pad, right? Because the re-inkers are, are super concentrated. There's many, many uh, people out there, if, if you just Google watercoloring with distress ink, you will be amazed uh, of how amazing it is to watercolor with these because these are, these are kind of liquid watercolors before liquid watercolors. They're not really meant for that. It's a saturation. It's designed to re-ink an ink pad, but because they're water reactive, one drop of this goes a very long way. But the re-inker gives you saturation. It also gives you blend, and you can achieve that with a pad. It's just a pad when you're watercoloring by smooshing your ink pad, you just have to build up more layers. So something to, to play around with. But yeah, look at the reflection of metal in that card. Amazing. Like I just saw this and I literally was like, oh my gosh, that's so freaking cool. So cool, right? But again, stylistically, so different, right? We saw Sharon's cards, Stacy, Zoe. And then our final make will show this panel that Paula created. Again, just seeing uh, from, from the shabby side, right? That vintage, vintage look that, that has, I don't know, all, all the good. They're all the good. And, and Paula's are always just packed with packed with details too that most of the time I'll even miss, but I'll start with just on the background. So this is a vignette display panel. So this is wood, this is ideology, but just using the metal, right? And that woven 3D folder. Here, let me get it to focus. There we go, put my finger there. There we go. Take a look at that detail. And she did that all the way around, right? Using paints. So we got a little uncharted in there but also layering other colors, of course. She's got all of her secrets and again, she shares a lot. Beautiful background, right? Uncharted Mariner in the back, little spots of, of surprise colors. Paul always likes to surprise me with little colors, little bits of, of pinks, taffies. But then here, this is the bubble stamp, of course, stamped with uh, Distress Embossing Glaze. This is an antique linen, and when you stamp first, it creates a beautiful resist, but it gives it such a sandy feel, doesn't it? But, but at the same time, when I, like at first I looked at this, I'm like, oh, it's kind of beachy. But then when I see the rest of it, I'm like, no, actually I read it more of like a, a gilded gold, almost like a gold webbing because of the, the additions of, for example, the, the stencil chip, right? That little bit of brass. I love that tag used in the background, the little number five tag. So happy that we have those number five tags uh, now, but using a quote chip, love the ideology pocket watch. You look inside the little detail, we've got the flare, we've got clipping stickers, there's little baubles inside. Uh, I know if you follow her on social, she was talking about using foundry wax, right? And how beautiful foundry wax is on these heirloom flowers. Metal back here. So that's the adornment. She colored these flowers. It's the ideology bouquet. These are little paper flowers that you can ink, right? Look at the little details of that. But just so charming. And then, of course, the backdrops where we can add these photos. So these larger photos and pieces. These are the ideology backdrop paper. Uh, this is uh, our newest volume, volume three, that just has some some great elements. And then of course, in the back, the whole thing comes together with that baseboard uh, window frame. Absolutely charming. But again, you see here what a, a color can do. Unbelievable, right? I mean, Uncharted Mariner, it's like you see all of these and then you're like, so how did I make this long without it? That to me is the excitement of the new color. And and it may not be for everybody. You may be like, yeah, I'm, I'm still good, you know, in, in my world of, of pinks and, and orange and yellow. Absolutely. But for me, I need it to be uh, in this world of, of Uncharted because I, I like the idea of the potential to really get so many unique values of a color. And of course, having all of these different products, that's just inks, your re-inkers. You could even paint with oxide. I know a lot of people paint with oxide re-inker as well. Spray stains, you've seen that used. A lot of saturation. Oxide spray, you've seen that used. Again, a lot of saturation. Paints, man, don't underestimate the value of good uh, distressed paint because of that 
water reactive feature, our glaze, which that has super impressed me with all the makes of, of how dark and rich and saturated that, that is or can be. And then of course my favorite, the pin. So a lot of cool things, right? Woo! That is what I love about new color. So there we have it. That is Uncharted Mariner. Pretty amazing, right? Thank you. Thanks for all the, the kind comments. I agree, Mel. How did we go so long without this color? But nevertheless, it's here. Oh, Monty's here. Monty's, she does a beautiful watercolor with Distress Reinker. She was just sharing it. So thank you, Monty. I love that. I love it. I love it. Thanks, JT. Thanks, Linda. It's, it's exciting. So shout out to the team at Ranger. Uh, so amazing. I agree, Tifa. It is a beautiful color. Thanks, Belinda. Hello, Ben. Shout out to Ben at Art from the Heart in the UK. So if you're looking for the new color. Thanks for stamp a lot. Memory Bound in Iowa. Shout out to you guys as well. I, I think that really any time that we can, we can pull this off, it is a huge feat for Ranger because not only are we developing a color, so a shout out to um, well everyone at Ranger because everyone kind of plays their, their part, but the guys in the lab, they have a huge challenge to not only create a color. I mean, creating a new color is a challenge in and of itself, but having a color in all of those different mediums Unbelievable. So I hope you guys uh, like the new color. It's to me, it's absolutely, absolutely a must have for me. No, my glasses don't match. I think it's just a reflection of. Come of on, the new Captain. How can you not like the new color? Look, I know you said no yellow, but. Oh my gosh. I nailed it. <laughs> I nailed it for Uncharted Mariner. No, you did. Yeah, you did. I did. It works. I have to say. Oh, see, now my glasses don't. Now my face is red. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, I'm speechless. It's perfect, I'm ready. Let's go, Captain. So, okay, <laughs> I'll have to get my thoughts together. I have to choose. Oh, my, my okay. better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see if I have to tip the camera down because, <clears throat> well, hold on, I have to get my act together. So for those that followed, uh, have been following these new colors, oh my gosh. So I, I have to just, <laughs> I have to, I just have to form words. For those who watch a new color, he did this to me at Kitsch Flamingo, oh, right? Yeah. I turned around and he was in this onesie that he got on Amazon. Yeah, it was awesome. If, you, if you've noticed, he hasn't really done that the last few colors. Not that I said he couldn't, but I was just like, you know, just kind of give me a warning. And he's like, oh, okay, all right. So no, I, you get no warning. I've been tracking Amazon because I was like, it's a new color. He's gonna be up to something. There you go. Know. Did Art get it for you? No, I went no. to Harbor Freight. <laughs> Harbor Freight, <coughs> Harbor Freight, and but, Hobby Lobby. Yeah, any anything. I was like, okay, I'm gonna just watch this. Yeah. Well, it's flawless, but it you got to see this because it's. Oh, you can't. I don't know. You're gonna have to like stand on a, a stool or a chair. We'll oh, take yeah. some pictures and post it. You can see he clearly <laughs> cut them into shorts. I did, I so. Them. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, well, they're over. Are they? They're over. Oh my! They're like waiter pants. They're yeah. like fishermen. I get it. Mariner. Mariner. Yeah, yeah, Mariner. Ready to set sail. Let's go. All right. <laughs> <coughs> okay. <laughs> I'm joking. You're right. Joke. I'm out. You're right. <coughs> <coughs> well, that's what I get for saying no to yellow. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? It's like, <laughs> well, they don't make yeah. the outfit in blue. You're not going to do yellow, so that is what we're going to do. All right. Ah, the blood could rush out of my head now. That, That's epic, Mario. You are the best sport, Whew. I have to say. It's warm. It, well, it's made out of like rubber or it's, something. It's, it's heavy due to vinyl or something. Very oh, warm. my gosh. <clears throat> okay. So, there we go. So, Uncharted Mariner. It's it's definitely a, a win. It's a hit. It's so... That was good. I didn't think you were going to get me after Kitsch because, really, the last couple colors, it's been kind of... Well, I was going to say smooth sailing, but there we go. Now we're going to have all these puns about Uncharted Mariner, but that's just amazing. And I, I did find it a little awkward that when I turned around, he wasn't right here. But then again, you know, he sometimes has to get the door for FedEx or whatever. But anyway, so you're a great sport, Mario. You were, you were good. Hey, it's super fun. <clears throat> I like to be part. You, you are. I do love that. It's still good. But yes, still no yellow. But there you go. That was your yellow for those. But we probably, I would say that's probably mustard seed. So we already had that. So... Uh, anyway, I, I think that that just shows you. We do have fun with the new color around here. It is something that, you know, whenever we launch a new color, it, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of anticipation. So not only a shout out to Ranger, but really um, anyone in the industry that's part of new color, right, from the retailers that might get their order ahead of time, because Ranger is, tr is trying to ship it out early. 
uh, so people can get it earlier. But it is about, you know, keeping it a secret, keeping it a surprise. And so for all those people that, that just kind of play by the rules and play nice, this is all about just having fun with the new color. So the element of surprise, uh, as you know, we kind of don't do that with other new release products anymore, but there is something about just having the anticipation and the surprise of a new color. And so uh, I thank you guys for, for being part of, of the launch. It's, it is always fun to, to not only see the new color, but maybe even understand why uh, it, it needed to be in the line, see the makes and inspiration, and then you never know what, what may or may not happen uh, with Mario. I, I don't know if the next new color I just need to like lock the studio door, or what, but no, it's, it's good fun. I, we're going to have another photo shoot. So I'll be posting that in, in my story for sure, like I did with Kitsch, but uh, it's really good. So yes, now that we have colors, I do believe um, uh, there will be a set of crayons coming because I think now that there's three colors, I think we are due a new crayon. I'm not sure the release date of that, but because uh, it's like one is a three count for crayons and one is a four count for minis, but we just had minis. So I think it's going to be uh, crayons, hopefully this year. I think that would be, that would be really, really good. Uh, and then we have three colors left. It's three colors that will, uh, who knows when they'll be released. I say now that they're going to be released when they're ready. I think that makes it a lot more fun and takes a lot of pressure off of Ranger because uh, I do have some other great products coming out this year uh, with Ranger that are not new color. So uh, they're working on that as well. So I really, need, really uh, can you give me a little hint so, on the color so I can start working on absolutely some Absolutely not. So that, there you go. That's <laughs> that's it. But he he'll hear or see all of that. So it is really good. So thanks, you guys. They they love the outfit, Mario. I'm sure you'll see the love when you when you pick your phone because we don't have any pockets in that. There you go. No pockets. Oh my gosh, he even used the tiny attacher on the side. I just see the side of his <laughs> pants. He's he's literally hemmed them or whatever with the tiny attacher. Uh, uh, hemmed them with the tiny attacher. They, they can't see. But and I'll, I made them. I'll in take shorts. pictures. I will I will totally take pictures. So really, good good time. So I hope you guys. Uh, are excited about Uncharted Mariner. I think it is a great color in distress. I can't wait to see what you guys do with it if you choose to get it. I do think it, it's always nice when we have a palette this extensive to, to not only add a color, but add a color to me that has a, a very unique uh, place in the world of distress. Because as remember, and I'll, I'll tell you this, as remember, <laughs> as always, and remember, that I was kind of as remember, it's really about... Um, using the colors together. Don't be afraid of that. So if you're ever looking for a color that maybe is a little dirtier than this or a little lighter than this, if you have many distressed colors, you can ink the stamp with multiple ink pads without contaminating your ink pads. So if you're doing two different yellows, you can put them on at the same time. Uh, you don't have to worry about mixing it. If you are worrying about mixing it, there are options. There are ways that you can uh, smear your ink pad onto a craft sheet uh, and use that as a stamp pad. You can brayer different colors on. So for those that are always looking, because I do read whenever we do a new color, they're like, I would like something like a little, a little bit lighter than Age Mahogany. I'm like, well, a little bit lighter than Age Mahogany is not worth doing a little bit lighter because then it's just a little lighter of Age Mahogany. So you could take Age Mahogany and then add a little lighter value uh, by throwing in a pink, like maybe Kitsch Flamingo or something. So just, just kind of play around with that and mixing ink with oxide. You ever want to lighten up a, a dye color very quick, throw in a little oxide of that color and that's going to give you uh, that brighter value as well. So you're saying batten down the hatches. You are a good sport, man. That was really, really good. So uh, thank you all for, for tuning in for the new color. A shout out to, to really um, the makers. They just I, I always love to see how they interpret the color and, and really stay true to their style. It's good. And of course, a shout out to you because you... And uh, you how about a shout out to you? You definitely got me. the new color... Without Uncharted, I wouldn't have this awesome outfit. <laughs> Thanks. I, I do like you I do really like working good. on a on a new color. I really do. But you yeah, awesome. you got me this time. I didn't think you would, but you did. So, but I, I was able to compose myself. That was a. I think I was going to bounce back. Hey, who for a while, knew that so. this would be at Harbor Freight? I didn't. I can tell you, I didn't. Yeah. You and it's the, it's the shirt, too. <laughs> you don't want to ask me about the shirt. I probably don't. Because <laughs> no. I'm like, you don't own that shirt. I don't so. own a shirt like this. You do now. <laughs> it's so good. All right. Well, it's thank so, you. It's yeah. So, it's, it's so it's just so. Well, thanks so much for celebrating the new color. Uh, yeah. Uh, Welcome home, Uncharted Mariner. We've been thank waiting you. for you. Thank you. Um, good job. The flat lay is going to go up right after this live. It does have some. Someone said my shirt has uncharted features. It does. You know, it that's is a little nice. bluish this morning when nice. I saw it. I was like, ooh, that's yeah. not black, but. Yeah, I like that. Well, the black one was a little too too thick this morning, so this is a little oh, lighter. I was going to wear the strap one first. Yeah. Probably better not. That's all right. Um, 
So yeah, thank you so much for, for celebrating. Today, there's going to be makes. I know that uh, the makers uh, that were part of live, I know they're each doing posts, but they're going to be doing posts throughout the weekend, maybe even into next week. So uh, follow along. They might be doing tutorials. They might be sharing just some, some inspiration behind it. I know that there's a lot of places that have the new color that are shipping. Uh, the flat lay is going to go up as soon as this live is over. I will oh push my the gosh. flat lay. Come on, um, Holt, that flat lay. I will say this has been my favorite, uh, uh, my absolute favorite flat lay that I've, I've ever done. And it started with uh, a very cool piece, probably the, the coolest piece that I've ever purchased for a flat lay, probably the most expensive one too. Yes. But it set the, it set the stage, so you will see that. So the flat lay... Uh, we'll be posting right, as the, well. The flat line is it really, it's perfection. It's, it's so good. I had a great time doing it. It only took like maybe four or five hours to put together, but it's totally worth it to me. It's really good. Um, the blog post on timholtz.com will also go live. So if you want to go back and look at any of these makes that we shared, that's all on timholtz.com with thumbnails. So you can see that for the makers and of course the replay. So thanks again uh, for just having such a fun new color launch. It's It's been... Thanks everyone. It's been good. <laughs> all right. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye you guys. Thanks Take everyone. Care. Bye.